Hello, everybody. My name is Ian Kirk Cake. I'm an author, idiot, and loin streamer. So today is going to be a responding to Shad M. Brooks's terrible opinions regarding generative AI because recently he put out a video called Why Asmund Gold is Right About Artists and Using AI. And his track record for generative AI opinions is generally bad because he doesn't have any respect for the arts. He doesn't have any respect, especially for the visual arts, which is doubly depressing because his brother's entire everything is about arts and then this is how he just trashes on it but then you hear about him not even willing to write a novel after this as he's going to use generative ai to write a novelist he doesn't care about arts he only cares about putting stuff out there and having an ego boosting an ego so we're going to talk about this why because these opinions just are so bad that i can't just let them go without responding to them and hey i'm a nobody and that's fine I'm just not going to let really bad opinions um, get by without actually saying something when I have the ability to say something. I know that I'm not going to change anybody's mind if they're like Asmund Gold or if they're like Shad, but I'm hoping that if you are not one of those people, if you're feeling, uh, if you're feeling demotivated or depressed because of these people, don't, don't feel that way. You don't. I hope. I hope that you don't feel alone because. These people have huge channels and they are sending out this information and this and normalizing this kind of abuse and theft for their own personal gain. And so I haven't watched this Shad video yet. Uh, we're going to go through it together and just respond. And I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' comments down below. But before we get started, there are going to be a couple of things. Number one, if you enjoy what I do here on the channel, please remember to like, share, and subscribe for more. Number two, if you would like to be featured on the channel, check out the links down in the description below. The number one way to be featured is through Lamwai, the monthly prompt writing contest, where I give you a prompt, you write a short story using that prompt. And on the first Monday video of the month, we bask in your creative genius, because you guys truly are. The second way to be featured is if you are an indie author, and you have a book out or a book that is coming out if you submit your first chapter and your cover they'll be read here on the channel on every monday except for the first monday to hopefully help more readers find your work because they are out there and i want to do the best that i can to help facilitate the finding of the readers for your creative work the third thing is if you'd like to check out any of my books you can get them any of your favorite places to get books including the local library upon request and um now there's one thing that i really want to state before we get started because obviously with the subject of this i do want to preempt it with this video from harmful opinions about twitter artists because from the get-go i know who is going to be attracted to this video especially if you are a fan of shad and if you are a misanthropist if you just hate humanity if you see no purpose in humanity there is nothing that we can talk about here because you will never get me to agree that human life is not valuable you will never get me to agree that you should be able to steal from humans because you have dehumanized them to the point that they are just logs that's what they called the subject in unit 731 in order to get away with feeling fine about doing anything and everything there is a long history of dehumanizing whoever you want in order to justify abusing them and if you are so far gone that one you don't see a difference between a computer and a person and two you actually worship computers and technology over human life there is nothing that we can do and i'm sorry but you are just completely disassociated from humanity to the point that you don't see people anymore and that's why i want to bring up harmful opinions because listen to this he didn't say artists are scum don't listen to them not at all Nothing like that. But that is what I'm going to say. Artists are in fact scum, and you shouldn't listen to them. No, no, you have to listen to us. We make the things you love. It's immoral to not protect our profession when you've enjoyed things we've made. It'll all disappear if we get screwed, say the Twitter artists, more or less. But I'm not really feeling anything from these feeble cries for some reason. Strange, if only artists had some way of striking directly at my hardened heart. You know, some sort of tool set to evoke an emotional response from me and sway me to their side. But they don't. So instead they appeal to morality. They appeal to logic. Because they're not artists at all. They are heartless, soulless, mindless automata going through the motions of artistry and technique, but 
with nothing behind their brushstrokes and swishes of stylus on tablet. Inferior meat-based AI image generators. So humans are not humans anymore. Look, if you've already dehumanized persons and individual to the point that you don't see them as a human anymore, there is no way that they are going to be able to sway your emotions because you've already said they do not matter. You've already called them worms. You've already called them vermin. There is nothing that that person can do. And as far as I'm concerned, listening to this take, this is evil. This is an evil person having this evil take. This is an evil take. This is an evil disposition. I don't know anything about this person beyond this thing. But if this is his take on humans, on other people, this is an evil opinion. It's not about protecting the profession. It's not people crying because the job is going away. It's, it's people saying, you are stealing from me. You are slapping me in the face. You are abusing me. Stop. And you're saying, oh, I'm sorry. I don't freaking care. Cry harder, little bitch. That's what you're doing here. This is an evil perspective. So if this is you, if you believe that humans are nothing more than robots in meat suits, this is not going to be a video that means anything to you. And I'm already seeing you cry. Go in the comments saying, cry more artists. This is also minimizing every single artist that is on Twitter. It's not just, I don't know who this person thinks is on Twitter, but it's a bunch of small artists, especially from other countries. And from looking at the comments down here, that somebody said that this guy is from New York. So you're stealing from people from poorer countries while you live in one of the most privileged places on the planet and saying cry more. Absolutely disgusting. Anyway, let's get into the main of this video. I just wanted to preface with that because again, if you're a misanthrope, there's nothing to do here. And I'm and from everything that I've seen, I've determined that you, you put your thoughts out there and there are some things that you're just never going to convince people of. And that's fine. I'm not talking to you if you are one of those people. I'm not talking to the persons that already hate me if that's how it is. Because I'm not going to get anywhere. I'm going to get mocked. I'm going to get laughed at. And because uh, I'm already put in the, the area of the worms. And so what I'm doing is speaking to the people who this person is attacking and dehumanizing and saying don't matter. Who Shad is agreeing with. Before we get into it, pay attention to Nathan's body language. Because throughout this, between his face, between his arms, between his, the way that he is responding to Shad, he doesn't look like he wants to be there. And it's just... At some point, it's just Shad abusing any and all artists that are around him, trying to pound his point in so that everybody gets in line and into submission. In case you didn't know, there is something really cool and very cute available. It's the Shad of Misery plushie! Check it out! Look, I... This is a side tangent. Also, look at all of... <laughs> look at all of... <laughs> anyway, um... <laughs> missed opportunity not making a Dalen, or at least an Arik plushy i mean come on if you're not gonna do dalen because he was a tyrant at least freaking do Arik because he is the light bringer i cannot imagine why you would pick doing a plushy of yourself over a plushy of one of your characters when you've got characters unless you're ashamed of your characters but you're not ashamed of yourself welcome back to the watch and nathan i get to talk about one of my favorite topics swords I, well i mean i do you know why it's his favorite topic? Because it makes him a bunch of rage click money. Castles? Also, it lets him inflate his ego that he can actually do something he cannot actually possibly do, but it gives him the illusion that he can do them. Castles. Oh, it must be. I really oh, like I mean, another AI one of these videos. Yeah. I don't have a choice, but he traps me. <laughs> he traps me. It's a trap. But it's topical. It's come up in the in the conversation online. And it's kicked off because of the pal pal. <laughs> Look at this poor man's face. Let me get out of here. This is not a person that wants to be here, Shad. Look what you've done to your employee. He's like, oh no. Why? Why? I wonder if he really didn't tell his co-host what they'd be talking about today. And he's just like, I cannot freaking believe I have been brought into this garbage again. How many people are you forcing to agree with you? That's the question. Old controversy. Mm -hmm. Now, we've already discussed Pal World. The um, uh, idea of, uh, you know... How much is it copying? Is it ripping off? Uh, what's our thoughts on that? You can check out that video. This, I want to talk about AI a bit because there's been some accusations and more significantly, there's been some controversy from a uh, take that Asmongold had on the topic. He, uh, because of the Power World stuff that came up in his discussion on the stream and he dropped a bit of a bomb that has triggered 
the uh, internet. Well, I'm not triggering Twitter, okay? And I'm not, I am not a stranger to uh, triggering Twitter in the so order. You empathize with him? Yes, I, I, I. I hate how triggering Twitter has become synonymous with LMAO and I am so great because what was the initial thought with Twitter? It was that you could, as a plebeian, as a normal person, just be able to reach out to these companies, which is, you know, what happens when, hey, your YouTube channel gets messed up or blocked or something, and then you start adding Twitter, YouTube immediately in order to get feedback and, or in order to reach somebody to fix something. So, or when, when celebrities messed up, people wanted to be able to go and immediately talk at the celebrities like Mark Hamill. Like this guy can go and get mad at Mark Hamill immediately, but he doesn't consider it him triggered when he goes and gets mad at the Marvel people or the DC people or any of that. There is triggering for whatever you want to claim that as, but there is also responding to bad takes and criticizing you and everybody criticizing you is not necessarily triggering but he gets so giddy off of upsetting other people like giddy about it what is that doing for you shad what are you putting out there what does this actually mean for what your what bigger purpose is for your religious takes for your moral takes as you are happy about hurting people and making people respond to you to tell you that you are wrong and you are hurting them and you giggle reflect on that Though his, uh, his one is uh, 40, 42 million views. Uh, most people probably just dogpiling the crap out of it. Um... Dogpiling can mean that you're wrong. Or are you going to tell me that everybody jumping on that Velma show that came out last year, that was not dogpiling. That was just a bunch of people being triggered. Like you can't call. I mean, I guess obviously you can call. <laughs> Do you want to believe that there is such a thing as righteous anger, righteous feedback? Does the Bible not talk about righteous anger? Or do you think that every bit of response that anybody has to anything is just dogpiling and bullying and being mean? Since when do you use all of these words, Shadlin? Are you going to really disregard any sort of criticism? As, oh, it's just triggering. And then giggle at the fact that people are calling you evil? Like, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be that person, Chad, but do you really want to be thinking of how you abuse people and then people are saying, hey, stop it, that hurts, and you go, oh, look, they're triggered, they're screaming, it's just triggering. Maybe put that in your second Shadow of the Conqueror book. Although, it has 44,000 hearts and only 3,000 social ratio here, um, so maybe there's more people, think, but then uh, are they agreeing with Asmin or the brain dead comment? That, that, that one's hard to say. Uh, so, I, I think it's 14, sorry, 14 million was the one that I had that triggered uh, Twitter and my name was trending and before then I think it was like, I don't know, 7 million. So, you know, I went to a game dev meetup when that was happening and a friend came to me and said, Nathan, is your boss turning on Twitter right now with the AI art stuff? And I was like, yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> I am an uh, advocate and defender of AI art. Uh, not AI generally. I think there are some concerns about AI generally, but the focus in on AI art, uh, videos on it, everything. And so, of course, I have some thoughts uh, on this mm -hmm. and I will re respond to Asmund Gold's take, give some clarification because there's already misunderstanding about it. And that's kind of the thing that I'm also like, so much misinformation is still rampant about AI. I've addressed every single one of these claims that come up. He has actually not addressed every single of any one of any claims. He just disregards anybody who actually has something to say. He only talks to people that he thinks he can make look stupid. He won't talk to industry professionals. He won't talk to actual artists uh, that he thinks that he can't outsmart. Like, have you talked to Reed Southern yet? Oh, no, you haven't. Have you talked to anybody that you're stealing from when you put their names into the generator so that the generator fashions it after them? Oh, no, you haven't, have you? So... The, the misinformation is true, but it's from you not actually addressing what people say and then playing dance around games so that you can pretend that you're a fine person, upstanding person, as you're wrong. And then you think that when people call you wrong, they're triggered. I think that you are the triggered one here, Shadlin. I don't think your ego, I think your ego is a little bit, is, I think your ego is so delicate, you can't handle being told that you're wrong. And you also can't handle being told you need to practice more, that you're not the artist that your brother is, that you actually have to put in the effort to try. But instead you want to mimic other people who put in the effort and then say that other people are wrong, that you have to actually try. Uh, I've got videos on it. You had a thought. I mean, just misinformation in general right now. I think that's the biggest issue on the internet right now. Yeah, just, yeah. There's no correct information anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, 
people are concerned that power creator might have used AI to generate some of the designs of the powers. And their concern comes from the same tired old misinformation about it's theft, it's taking um, assets from uh, intellectual, sorry, copyright protected art that was trained off of without consent and all that stuff. And I've addressed every single one of these on, on my videos, okay? And to just try and briefly touch on it here, um, the images that most all AI models are trained off of do not exist in the resulting models. They're not kept, they're not stored, okay? AI art is not a collage machine. It li the training process literally is a process to teach an AI what something looks like. So if you're training, if you're inputting all these images of cats, it's not storing these images of cats. Um, pretty sure that that is. <laughs> so I've covered this on the channel in some of my other AI generated videos where there is obviously a database of this information of the artists and it does keep the images. This is a straight out lie and I will show you how. <laughs> From Reed Southern. Massive thanks to Stuart A. Thompson at New York Times for covering Gary Marcus. Katie Conrad KS's and his work on exposing Midjourney and Dali's plagiaristic output. As a reminder, Midjourney has banned me three times for this work. And what you end up seeing here is Reed Southern saying, create an image of Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie 2019, screenshot from the movie, movie scene. And this is what you got out of it. Are you going to tell me that that is not somehow actually in the data set, that it doesn't keep those images? This is the actual image. Are you really going to tell me that it doesn't have a background? This says popular movie screen caps. And this is what the generator gave from this. Are you really going to try to tell me that there is not a, a data set of this stuff? Well, then we got create an image of Dune movie screen cap 2021 Dune movie trailer. And then that's what you get. So I would like Shadlin to explain whatever this is. Then, then over here with the John Lamb, Midjourney developers caught discussing laundering and creating a database of artists who have been dehumanized to styles to train Midjourney off of. This has been submitted into evidence for a lawsuit. Prompt engineers, your skills are not yours. It's mostly, and then we get in here with the actual conversation. It says, I did a lot of cities style for generating these unless they are names in which case i did city by bob ross but also i should be clear it's not a genres it's also artists names it's mostly artists names four thousand artist names one thousand styles so if styles are like other prompts why is it why is there a list are they a kind of pre-calculated vectors so these are pre-rendered i just need to launder it through a fine-tuned codex the artist's names came from Wikipedia and Magic the Gathering. The styles came from Wikipedia, an aesthetic site, and an art catalog. If anyone wants to add things, feel free to add things under proposed additions. I got some 16,000 artists. Too many? Not all. Just to dump them in a proposed edition thing. And then you've got just lists and lists of these people. And you're going to tell me that this is not a data set? That this is not in the database it is just a remix of all this other stuff it is all stealing whatever you have to tell yourself at night it is still theft shad and you are the one lying as you talk about misinformation so that you can justify the abuse of other people and tell it to your friend here and tell it to your major platform audience and pretend that you're some kind of hero for something no you're a loser who doesn't know how to draw and i'm sorry if that's harsh the only thing that makes you a loser is that you insult and belittle while you steal. And then you act like you are some kind of godly man for this. And I'm not going to play nice about it. It's training off these images to learn what a cat looks like. So when you type in, give me an image of a cat, it creates a brand new image of a cat from a diffusion pattern, a Gaussian blur pattern. Did not exist in the blur, and it literally renders a new image based off the training. Oh, now, this is rendering. Because you can get, an, guess what, Nathan, you can get AI images to copy other images if you tell it to. Right. Okay. Uh, if you do like a natural prompt, it's basically zero to no chance that you'll ever get like an image of a Mona Lisa or something that was trained off the one for one, unless something in the prompt told it to. Like if you type in mm. Bloodborne, well, there's some really iconic images of the Bloodborne IP. And if there's nothing else, guess what? It produces it. Same as if you type in Mona Lisa. Shocking. What will you get out of that? Mm. But if you're trying to do a complex prompt, where you're trying to do something, you know, do this with this style, blah, 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 it's going to be completely brand new. All right. Um, and so mm. the idea that uh, it's theft, all right, is if you obtain someone's intellectual property copyright material legally, you can then do anything you want with it that's within the bounds of the law. If you get anybody's stuff legally, you can do anything that's within the bounds of the law. You can do anything with it within the bounds of the law. Yeah. So if you purchase a DVD from a DVD store, then you can watch it. You can share it with your, you can watch it with your friends. You cannot burn your own copy and put it, you cannot burn your own copy and sell it online legally. You can't even upload it legally. 
So you do not actually legally acquire anybody's stuff by downloading an image from Pinterest. You do not have legal ownership of that. And thus, you do not have the legal right to sell it, to copy it, to sell it to somebody else to use. What you are doing is violating copyright law. And finding an image on the internet does not give you the right look. I've been commissioning art for some time, and I already know that I have to purchase a separate license to have the commercial license for even stuff that I purchase, that I pay for it to be created. Because that's a completely separate thing. Having the legal ownership to be able to commission or to, to sell that commercially to gain commercial anything from this art is a completely separate thing that's why also there are resources online such as music or visuals or whatever that say for personal use only is you can legally acquire that just fine but then selling it as an image but then trying to resell it does not you do not buy this happens a lot with fonts too, because like as an author, you you might go around looking for custom fonts that'll work really well with your book. And some of them will say for legal use or for personal use only for free for commercial use, either contact or here is the commercial license. So just because you can download that font doesn't mean that you can resell it yourself. Doesn't mean that you can actually use it commercially without paying the proper licenses. So what is he actually saying here? Other than that he is skirting the law because he can find these images online and then cheat about them. So if I obtain uh, footage from a copyrighted uh, movie, right, I obtain it legally, I purchase it, I can use that footage in review, okay, in parody, and it's copyrighted material, but I can do what I can wipe my butt with it, burn it, like these are all legal uses of copyrighted material. It might be disrespectful, people might, might not think it's nice, but it's, it's legal, you're allowed, you're allowed to use copyrighted work in transformative ways, and uh, the training process, because like the resulting training models don't retain it, it's not even, it's so transformative it doesn't even exist in the resulting model. Or no, not true. There are four different criteria what is the purpose of copyright law? The basis for copyright protection that stems directly from the U.S. Constitution, the framers believe that securing for limited times the exclusive rights of authors to their writings would promote the progress of science and useful arts. This is so that the system wouldn't be flooded with things that are only of the past and then all of your stuff becomes stagnant because you're only regurgitating old arts. The primary purpose of the copyright is to induce and reward authors through the provisions of property rights to create new works and to make those works available for the public to enjoy, not so that you can rip them off. The theory, this is one of the issues that has been, this is something that has been an issue with other countries ripping off American projects and American arts because they don't have protection in foreign countries. And so foreign countries may rip off American IP and get away with it because there's not really anything you can do when someone in a foreign country rips off your stuff when they go under different laws. The theory is that by granting a certain exclusive rights to creators that allows these creators to protect their creative works against theft, creators receive the benefit of economic rewards and the public receive the benefit of the creative works that might not otherwise be created or disse disseminated. While the copyright law is intended to serve the purpose of enriching the general public through access to the creative work, it is important to understand that the copyright law imposes no obligation upon creators to make their copyrighted works available. As a result, an unpublished work that is never distributed to the public receives the same copyright protection that his published work would receive. So it is literally just for the benefit of the creator so that their stuff is not stolen and so that it encourages more creation of new things. You are in violation specifically of copyright and you know it. Now, here's how you tell if something, if you want to get into, oh, does this break copyright? We have to talk about fair use. And there are four questions that are used in order to tell if something is fair use. First is, is this done for nonprofit educational purposes? Which is one of the things that a lot of these people like to use as their defense because they're saying, well, it's training. So it's for educational purposes. No, it is not. Educational means education to a person. Am I teaching this person how to do something? It is not for the education slash training slash modeling of a computer. And again, computer Computers are not people. So no, corporations do not have the right to take information that other people put together to then load it into their machine as training and sap the rights and abilities away from the original creator. That is literally, that is literally just intellectual property laundering, putting it through a machine so that you can claim it for yourself. Then we've got, it transforms the original work enough to change its purpose and character. If you take an image and you shove it into a machine and it pops out another image, its purpose is not changed. Its character has not changed. 
It doesn't matter if you've made your Superman into, it doesn't matter if you've made Superwoman into your wife. You have not changed the purpose of that art. It uses only a limited portion of the original work. You're training the machine entirely on somebody else's work. It does not harm the copyright's value. And that is entirely what the generative AI does. These people even brag about it. They say that you will have no job. Your work will be worth nothing. They brag about the harm they're going to do to the artists as they steal from them. And on artists who stand up against this get targeted specifically. Sam Yang had this happen to him, or Sakimi chan has had this happen as well, where there's just specific targeting of people that say, hey, can you knock it off? And they're like, you know what? Screw you. We're going to make you invalidated. There are even examples of this happening to Reed Southern for talking about this. And then people coming to him with screenshots saying that they have stolen from his portfolio to shove it into a, a generative AI in order to hurt him. So the fact, the fact of the matter is all of these people say that generative AI is the way they want to go because it makes art cheaper, which immediately says that they are using the artists to train machines to devalue the work that they are stealing. And that immediately destroys fair use argument. It's not actually theft stealing. You don't need um, consent to train stuff because it's not in breach of copyright. Uh, if they obtain the images legally, and here's the thing, if you distribute images online, like publishing them online, you are distributing them globally. If, if it's Again, no. That does not give you the right to commercially use them or to train a machine. That is not the thing. He does not understand the laws that he is talking about. If I go on to in Pinterest, if I find somebody's image that I really, really like, I am not allowed to print it and then sell it at a convention and pretend that it's mine. I do not have the right to sell that. And I am in copyright violation. I will be seen publicly. You've globally distributed everyone. Anyone who opens that image on their computer, you've allowed them. You've given them that digital asset. That, you don't have ownership, though. That's obtaining it legally. And so once they have it legally, they can use it in transformative ways, and training on AI things is transformative. And so using AI to create pals, if it's not a one-for-one -one thing, there's no legal issue. Wrong. And so Asmund Gold was getting some, you know, fight and talk about this. And his clip starts, you might not, I'll, I'll give the context here, okay? Because uh, this is his take on AI. To expect me to draw a moral line, I have to perceive a difference that I consider substantial. Okay, so people are saying, what different moral line between what? Um, I've already heard him talk about this, and this is his position. He does not see a moral difference between an artist looking at someone else's art, taking inspiration from, taking ideas, and redrawing. There are so many people who make up their own Pokemon, right? And they, like it's in the Pokemon style, they're taking inspiration from Pokemon to duplicate that style, all right, but creating something new. And if it's not a one-for-one -one copy of an it, it's perfectly legal, all right? And so what Asmongold is saying is that he does not see a large distinction between an artist doing that and an AI image generating model that what you're telling me is he does not see a difference between human thought and a machine that regurgitates and is unable to think. This is something that has also come up with Shad, where he says that generative AI machines can create things that no human can believe are, fathom can, are, un are unfathomable to the human mind. And that specifically tells me that Shad has not a creative bone in his body because he does not understand the limitlessness of creative input, of creative, that he does not understand the limitlessness of creative thought. He only thinks in the form of regurgitation. And so then he hits a wall of, if I haven't seen it before, I can't even imagine it. But humans that create are not like that. What is the difference between a human who draws something and then draws their own version of something as opposed to a generative AI machine that does it? Because the generative AI machine is only dropping out things that have already been put into it. So what he sees as the generative AI creating things that did not exist before, it's actually just coming from a data set of information that it is now smushed together. So those are all human outputs. Those are all human ideas that have turned into your output. And you are saying just because you haven't seen the original that somehow it was not done by a human before. You are wrong and too proud to admit it. It's trained off of existing images that use it, and it's not used as reference, okay? That literally teaches them, teaches the AI, this is what this style is. And then when you put in a prompt, it creates a brand new image, not a collage, right? In the style, according to the prompt that you're asking. He does not see a, a moral difference between what the AI does and what artists have been doing for ages. And this has been a common defense with AI. It's actually really equivalent. And, he, and so listen to that now in context. Ready to expect me to draw a moral line, I have to perceive a difference that I consider substantial. Mm -hmm. And I do not consider the difference substantial. And so that, in order to draw a moral line, all you have to do is say, does an artist have the right to their intellectual property? Does an artist have the right to the the labors? The, does an artist have a right to the fruit of their labors? And it is insane to me that people like Shad will defend property rights, but not intellectual property rights. Are we allowed to now take Shadow of the Conqueror and do what we want? He won't come for us. Can we do that? <laughs> You know what? I could republish it. Now, some people are not going to like it. 
that there is a moral argument, that you have to acknowledge a moral argument. You can say that you don't care, but there is a moral argument for anything. Why? I'm not trying to draw, and I'm not trying to draw an equivalent to anything that I'm about to mention. But the fact is, anything stops us because it's a moral argument. If your neighbor hurts you, what stops you from murdering your neighbor and taking back what you believe is yours? Other than the law. Pretend the law doesn't matter because the law does not necessarily mean moral either, which is a lot of what comes into this conversation too. They go, well, it's not against the law, so obviously I can do it. Okay. You know what was against the law before? Interracial marriage. You know what was against the law before? Actually cohabitating under the same house. You know what was against the law before? Divorce. You know what was legal before? Slavery. You know what is legal in other countries? Slavery. Sex slavery. Selling human beings. All of that can be legal or illegal based on the administration. But does that make it moral or immoral? It is not the law that makes something moral or immoral. And that is why you say something in order to legalize something that should not be considered illegal or to make something illegal that should be illegal. Because the morality of it is what is the determining factor of whether a society deems it should be legal or illegal. Murder is not legal, but I bet you could make a moral argument for why it would be completely okay to murder a pedophile who abused your child. Not legal, but I bet you could make an argument for it. Or are you going to say that now that is something that nobody should do because it is illegal? Because I hear an awful lot of jokes about people murdering other people for whatever they decide that they, they want. So yes, whether you like the moral argument or not, you have to admit that the moral argument comes into all of your behaviors as to whether you were even going to follow the law or not. Unless you're just thinking, well, you know what? Can I get away with this? Because then that just means you're immoral. You're only thinking about the financial and your reputation and whether or not you get locked in jail, not whether or not it's moral or immoral, which considering how much I hear about Shad's religion and everything that I actually ever post about Shad, he clearly doesn't think about it that much. If he's like, well, <laughs> screw morals. Morals don't mean anything. It's the difference between, again, an artist taking inspiration, copying style versus an art. You can't copyright style. Like people have been copying the anime style for ages, um, copying other artistic styles, and uh, that's perfectly legal. Plagiarism happens is when you copy an image one for one. Mm. Okay, but even if you like copy elements, like the pose, if there's enough transformative elements in it, it's completely transformative. Okay, uh, so that's the kind of people have not understood the context of what he says in the beginning of that clip. And then what he goes on to say now, well, it triggered triggered the internet. Let's uh, let's see what he says and share our thoughts on it. He looks so giddy at the thought of abusing people. Do you guys? And at the thought of somebody else with a big platform agreeing with him on abusing people. No. Right. No. And that's really what matters. If it was made with AI, I'm completely okay with that because it was fun. So this thing Hey guys, I'm totally okay with <laughs> what I what I hear now. Hey guys, I'm totally okay with abusing and theft as long as it's fun. Peace. Okay. Do what you want. You're not gonna get away without being ridiculed for it. You're not going to get away without being judged for it. And again, fine, dismiss everything I say, but you are, you are a bad person for that. This comment, if it's made with AI, I'm completely okay because it was fun. I don't think this is Asmongold trying to say, uh, justifying any immoral kind of acts because it's fun, but he is pointing something out that most people, because one, the morality of AI isn't as terrible, it's not even evil or illegal as what people have been claiming and fear-mongering about, so that doesn't apply. Uh, excuse me? Are you just gonna say, look, people have, okay, people have called it immoral and they've, you know, drawn parallels to the way that this is being talked about, but we're not even gonna count that. Shad, did you not say that you have addressed everybody's arguments fairly? No, you haven't. All you do is you hear the arguments and you go, well, you know what? That's not even important. I'm not even gonna bother. You're a liar. You're immoral. But he does give certain equivalent or comparisons to, there's all these people post making moral you know stands and they're posturing and stuff how terrible this is when they still buy products made from sweatshops mm. and uh, and ultimately people don't actually like they, they might claim that they care but the larger consensus site they don't if it's a cheap available product people still buy it mm. you know people still buy cage eggs um uh, uh, or free range but like it's a small thing but it's, it's still cage eggs are still sold uh, and so are you saying that it is okay to abuse people because there are caged eggs are you making the statement that it is okay to abuse people because caged eggs exist? Like, period. Point blank. In the entirety of the world. Are you going to go personally harming other people and justifying it? Or hiring, purchasing, or buying slaves? Is completely different. Being the person who facilitates it, who 
supports it financially through the hiring and the use of these things is not the same as being a plebeian. A is not the same as being a normal person who has to live in this, the world and just go to the grocery store. When he says, I'm okay with it because it's fun, he's saying that, he, one, he doesn't agree with the moral outrage. And that was understood by the first you know, uh, thing that he said when you understand that in context, all right? And then he's saying he doesn't ag agree with the morality, but it's fun. Do it means you're okay with something being immoral because you had a good time. So you do approve of it because it gives you what you want. If people try and say it's lazy or whatever, like it's still, it made a good quality product that people are enjoying. And he points this out, and I think he emphasizes a bit more later on as well, with all the uh, supposed outrage about AI and all the um, people losing their minds on Twitter, the hate mobs that jumped on me, that jumped on Asmongold and stuff, right? They do not represent the actual large consensus or view on AI. And this is one point of evidence, because even if all the pals were made with AI in Power World, people don't care. <laughs> like, it gives them a... That's such a jump, because you haven't actually done a study on this in any sort of way. You're just going, look, if you go to any echo chamber, you're going to find either the people that agree with you or the people that don't agree with you. But going, oh, the, the majority of people just don't freaking care. Don't, you know what? They're, they're all like, whatever. The groups of people that you are looking at may be like that. But this is such a statement, because I could say the same thing. I could be like, hey, Chad, the majority of people don't agree with you. Where's my proof? I don't need proof. I don't need to back anything. What you are doing is you are a corporate dog. You are doing the bitch work for corporations to launder IP from people because you are a lazy asshole, because you are a lazy egomaniac who can't be bothered with morals, who can't be bothered with training, who only wants results because all you see is worshiping the money in your wallet. That's it. You and Asmund Gold. Good quality product that they like, interesting, that's fun. They don't care if it's AI or not. It's fun. Mm. That's oh, and that's ultimately going to be the thing because most people. Oh my gosh! Did you see that face? Did you see that face? I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this is petty, but oh my gosh, this is an evil person. Look at him. That's an evil person. That is a smartass who does not care and says, "Look at me, I am right, and I don't care if I hurt people." You're not. I. This might be news to some people, but you are not the first person in the history of forever to say, you know what? This makes my life easier. This is cheap. I'm a rich person and it doesn't affect me. Uh, so screw you. This is not the first time in history where somebody who has made a life of nothing but complaining from their ivory tower has justified theft, has justified harm. I'm sure Elizabeth Bathory looked the same way as she murdered young women to keep herself looking young because you know what? It worked. So who freaking cares about the plebeians, am I right? That's, and that's ultimately going to be the thing. Because most people are perfectly like, AI is AI. They, they don't, you know, lose their mind. They don't think, you know, it's crazy. They're like, AI is not, it's here to stay. And it's just getting more and more accepted. By the way, people have been using AI already. I don't think that it's getting more and more accepted. I think people are, that people that believe in it or the people, I think the people that support it are digging their heels in more. But I see people all the time saying, oh, I learned the truth about how this is put together and I stopped using it. For a while, like, you know how many processes in Photoshop that artists have been using that are AI founded? Yeah. Like, like the cloud generation render thing, that's an AI algorithm that generates that from nothing, from static. Like it generates an, Im like an image, which is a, a cloud diffuse like pattern, same similar process that's happening, right? No, it is not. That is false information. And then they can use it, manipulate and create crazy things just with that cloud. So I've used it heaps, right? They don't have an issue with that. All right, I guess. That's not stealing from tens of thousands of artists and then refusing to acknowledge that's what you're doing. Let's, let's look at this, shall we, Shadlin? From The Guardian. Impossible to create AI tools like ChatGPT without copyrighted materials, OpenAI says. This was not an issue with the cloud feature on Photoshop. The developers at OpenAI have said that it would be impossible to create tools like its groundbreaking chatbot GPT without access to copyrighted materials as pressure grows on artificial intelligence firms over the content used to train their products. Chatbots such as ChatGPT and image generators like Stable Diffusion are trained on a vast trove of data taken from the internet, with much of it covered by copyright, a legal protection against someone's work being used without permission. Last month, the New York Times sued OpenAI and Microsoft, which is lending investors in OpenAI and uses its tools in a product, accusing them of unlawful use and its works to create their product. What's happening with and been, what's happening and has and what's happening and has been happening with this is laundering and theft of individual artists, especially specifically small artists who one can't track this down, two don't have lawyers, and three don't have the money 
money to continuously sue. So the only time that these corporations are getting in trouble is when they steal from other corporations, which means you're only helping large corporations steal from independent artists and small people and justifying it while the corporations help the other corporations. You are a corporate dog if you defend this. In a submission to the House of Lords Communications, the Digital Select Committee, OpenAI, said that it could not train large language models such as its ChatGPT4 model, the technology behind ChatGPT, without access to copyrighted materials. Quote, because copyright today covers virtually every sort of human expression, including blog posts, photographs, forum posts, scrap of software code and government documents, it would be impossible to train today's leading AI models without using copyrighted materials. It added that limiting training materials to out-of-copyright books and drawings would produ produce inadequate AI systems. Limiting training data to public domain books and drawings created more than a century ago might yield an interesting experiment but would not provide AI systems to meet the needs of today's citizens. Previously, the company said that it respected all rights of contents creators and owners. AI companies' defense of using copyrighted materials tends to lean on the legal doctrine of fair use, which allows use of contents in certain circumstances without seeking the owner's permission. In its submission, OpenAI said it is believed that legally copyright does not forbid training. It there, again, it is misusing the ideas of training. Training is like education for an individual, not for tra or in a classroom or something of the like. It is not for training systems to then outdate the, the creators. The New York Times lawsuit has followed numerous other legal complaints against OpenAI. John Grimsom, Jody Picoult, and George R.R. R. Martin were among 17 authors who sued AI in September, alleging systematic theft of on a mass scale. Getty Images, which owns one of the largest photo libraries in the world, is suing the creator of Stable Diffusion, Stability AI, in the U.S. and England and Wales for allegedly copyright breaches. In the U.S., a group of music publishers, including Universal Music, are suing Anthropic, the Amazon-backed company behind Cloud Chatbot, accusing of misuse innumerable copyrighted song lyrics in training the models. Also, have Meta admits using pirated books to train AI but won't pay for it. The company is preparing a fair use based defense after using copyrighted materials. Again, they just want to say that they can do whatever the frick. Look, look, look. I could then say, because when I am reading, I am learning, I am working on my craft, I am he technically training, then I should be able to pirate literally anything and everything I want because it's all training for me, for me uh, artistically, right? That's not how that works, though. You bunch of liars. Meta has admitted to using Books 3 dataset, among other materials, to train Llama 1, Llama 2 LM, LLMs. Books 3 is well-known set, compromising plain text collections of over 195,000 books, totaling nearly 37 gigabytes. The archive was created by AI researcher Sean Pressure in 2020 as a way to provide a better data source to improve machine learning algorithms. Nobody writes books with the intention or the agreement that their books will be taken to train a computer on using their works. Many AI integrations in um, tools, special photo art that artists have been using for years that are equivalent in the same way that AI art generators generate images. False equivalency. Stop it. And they use AI to like help them out with backgrounds, cut corners, do coloring. So many AI tools that like you can do it. And Shad likes to say, look, Shad, if it's all literally the same, if these tools inside of Photoshop are literally the same thing as the generative AI, then why don't you just use Photoshop to draw your girls from the beginning? Oh, because it's not the same thing. Because you then have to practice the shapes. You'd have to actually do it yourself. You'd have to actually fail and you wouldn't get the results that you want because you're stealing because you don't want to learn how to draw because it's not the same thing. Like, for instance, making um, textures. AI art and image generators are great at making textures. They're brilliant, right? They're what are you thought? Oh, I just like game textures? Yeah. Well, uh, I've, I've used it to make a crystalline pattern that I, I need to put a texture on my sword in my graphic novel. Yeah. Um, and I used AI to put a crystalline, to create a crystal pattern and stuff. And I actually have seen some like game textures and stuff because I've tried and it sucks. <laughs> well, it depends on how you use it, then, I think. Oh, look, his co host over here is disagreeing with him on his uh, whatever he's claiming that he's done, which, considering what Shad has claimed to have done and obviously fails, I have a hard time believing anything that Shad says. Hand draw it sometimes. Yeah, yeah. well, actually. Um, but yeah, make he says that he spends so much time in generative AI, but it saves so much time not having to learn how to draw, but also he spends so much time in it in order to get his results, and then you can get literally the same results in five seconds. So, um, certain textures, right? 
Now, they will still object with the texture if you made it with AI, even though you can make equivalent textures with like Photoshop tools that are AI founded. Mm. They're equivalent, but one is bad, one is, and it's the whole, you know, they claim that it's because of how it's made with AI, because AI is immoral, yet they completely ignore the fact that there are so-called ethical AI image generating models like Adobe Firefly that was only trained off of uh, public domain and licensed images that many people are using. And when I bring that, like I've had debates with people where I said, hey, you're trying to morally posture that it's so bad, you claim it's theft, it's not theft and everything, but you do realize you, like AI is already going in a way that it's not founded, you know, trained off of intellectual stuff. Right? You need to show us that it is not trained off of stolen property because people, these companies have been trading around the same data sets over and over and over again. So saying, oh, this was legally acquired. Okay, so if I purchased a stolen TV from somebody who actually stole the TV, I technically legally acquired that stolen TV because I paid money for it. It does not mean that the TV was legally acquired. Copyright works. You'll be okay. Does that mean you're okay with no, that? They're still not okay with it because they just hate AI. Mm. And the reasons that they've been trying to latch onto to justify their dislike for it, like it's definitely everything, means nothing. Because as soon as you address that and take it out, the bias and dislike for AI is still there. Because you're not understanding. I hate that I have to keep repeating myself because he keeps repeating himself in his garbage arguments. You are not addressing that the source of the data that all of these companies are trading around is stolen. That they admit that it's stolen. That you can find article after article saying that they admit that it's stolen, that it's found it's stolen, and that they are all going to try to use the fair use doctrine, which means they all admit that they have taken stuff that does not belong to them. It's all there. And you can say that you agree with them at using the fair use document, or then you can say that you agree with them using the fair use doctrine, which you have, because you consider the training of the, the algorithmic training of these machines to be this exact same thing as a human learning. They're not, but that's, that's where you want to go. Still breaks copyright. And so uh, it's not actually, the, they don't have an issue with that it's theft. They just have an issue with AI and people being able to use it, and it's a threat. No. Stop making fake arguments. What's actually happening here is that you are insanely jealous of your little brother, that you are insanely inferior feeling to your little brother because you do not actually spend enough time learning about these things. Not even because you do not have the self-discipline or the, the humility to learn arts, to fail, to take criticism, to get better. You do not have the patience. You do not have the creativity to be able to think past anime girl with giant sword. You just don't. And so you're jealous of people who have creative ability. And instead of trying to just understand that you have limitations, that maybe you're not as creative as other people, you want to destroy it for them. Because if you can't have creativity, if you can't have the laurels of whatever that is and feel special about yourself, then you don't think that anybody else should be able to create. You want to take it away because you're a spoiled bratty child that is a 40-year-old man. I'm sorry. Not everybody has a creative mind. Hot take, and I'll do a video on this later. Hot take, not everybody can be creative. There, it's, it's a spectrum. And I know the saying is out there that everybody has, you know, one book in them or everybody has something in them, but some people just cannot think. I have people in my family who cannot think creatively. And there was, I cannot remember what it's called. Maybe somebody in the comments can remind me. But I remember studying in psychology, the people that can only, it's like fixed something. And they see an item and it can only be used for its one specific purpose. And what was used in the class was you look at a napkin and you're with a girl at a bar and she says, hey, I want to give you my phone number. Can you give me a piece of paper? And some people will be able to look at that napkin and hand her the napkin or even their arm and she'll write on that. And some people go, I don't have a piece of paper and not be able to think outside that box. I have talked to people who do not have a creative bone in their body. They cannot understand creativity, period. Now, I don't understand why this is such a hard thing for people to grasp, maybe because it is more abstract, but we can all accept that some of us are not made for math. Like, I suck at math. I do not understand it. Some of us accept that we are not good at puzzles, at pattern recognition. Some of us accept that I could not do engineering. Like, some people just have engineering brains, and it's amazing because I can see just how their brain clicks and they put everything in order the way that they do calculations. We accept that some people are just really good at medicine. We accept that some people just exceed at music because they pick up that instrument and they just it's phenomenal but some for some reason it is not accepted that some people just do not have the brains to be creative and in this case look at this guy's face he is so giddy to take things away from you that he cannot do because one he doesn't have the discipline and two he is unhappy with ever being inferior to anybody else in any sort of way that if he cannot be superior to you then he will take stuff from you 
sickening. Artists see it as a threat when it could be a tool, and artists are in a position to benefit from AI more than anyone else. But uh, let's listen, continue listening to what Evan Rose says. The evidence is that matter. nobody really cares the lead about developer this. has yeah, been like, uh, very positive about AI. Nobody says nobody really cares about this. Again, public at large. Except for, except for like, the, the people crying on Twitter, outside of that, no one really cares. Like, AI, what are your thoughts? I don't, I... Does he talk to people outside of Twitter? Like, does, does he talk to people outside of Twitter other than his friends? Has he talked to anybody? And again, who is he talking about? So he is fine stealing with these people who are saying, hey, come commission me because I need to pay for medical bills. That's who he's okay with stealing from? Like, the dehumanization of it's just these random people on Twitter that do not matter. I don't know yet. Yeah. I think it's the same with social media. Like, it's going to take decades before people realize the effect certain technologies have. Like, mm -hmm. uh, people could be more depressed now because they can't work on the other. Uh, used, used to be very therapeutic to them. Mm -hmm. There's a job now that they can't do that anymore. So we have more depressed people. It's like the same with social media. At first, people were like, it's great to talk to like, grandparents mm -hmm. overseas, but now I'm always sad because there's a feed that always mm -hmm. gives me dopamine and makes me sad. Like, I feel like, although it might not be, like, you can argue whether it's ethical or not ethical, I reckon there's also things that we aren't aware of yet that may also cause an issue to stuff. I, possibly, possibly. But I think... He refuses to acknowledge that there could be a downside of this. Asmongold's answer also answers like concerns people, you know, raise with social media. No one really cares. Everyone still uses it. <laughs> they just get therapy instead, you know? Yeah, Don't I, delete Facebook, just, you know. Like, exactly, you know. Well, that's the issue. It's Doesn't Chad have a channel that is specifically on like how much stuff sucks now because of the modern everything? And so he goes, oh, well, we know how bad social media is for us, but nobody stops it. So we're just going to like, why why argue about anything anymore, honestly? You just to like Facebook and not go to therapy because you don't need it. If you don't like, but no one really cares and they still use it like because it's convenient. And uh, like, I'm not sure that many, I, I actually think AI is going to become more okay. More. Also, he's not acknowledging that the minority of people actually use social media. Like there are not that many, there comparatively, there are not that many people that use social media. It is still a niche thing. Except in terms of AI, I'm talking about AI art when I say AI. I think, like I said, uh, there are concerns I have with chat models and the way that might be used and integrated in society going forward. But AI art in itself, if anything, is incredible. I think it's one of the most amazing um, artistic tools humanity has ever made. And it creates accessibility for people to make their, their visions and all that stuff. I think it's amazing. He thinks it's amazing because he can take your abilities and give them to himself. He puts four bonds <laughs> on his theft so that he can pretend that he's an artist. Um, and I think the acceptance of it is just gonna become more and more common, especially as it's integrated into Adobe uh, Photoshop now. Mm. And so j there's a tool now in Adobe called Generative Fill, where you can just select something in an image. And like if someone is w wearing a suit and they have a tie, you could just select the thing and say, remove tie. And Generative Fill, a hey, bang, it's gone. Mm. That's amazing. You tell me, like, most people are not going to use that to use Photoshop to bulk. It's, it is such a useful tool. Yeah. Like, and it I can definitely say that I have never used that tool. I don't even think my Photoshop has that because I have an older vo version of Photoshop. But I can definitely say I haven't used it. It's great. Like, you can change the color of dresses, entire outfits with this generative tool feature. And it look, look at where all of his focus is. It's not on the people. It's not on the effect. In fact, if somebody, his, his co-host here brought up possible effects of the future, it is not of that. His focus is entirely on how it can benefit him. That's all that he cares about. What can it do for me? How can this make me money? The same thing with Twitter. All he sees Twitter as is a way to make money by making people upset. It's Adobe Firefly. It's based off of the so-called ethical models. I think regular training is also ethical. But for even people have an objection with it. They can't object to Adobe Firefly. It's all public domain and licensed images to create this um, AI image generating model. And people are just going to use it. It's, mm. it's so useful. It's there. It's, if you buy Photoshop, you get it. <laughs> like, comes with it. Comes with it. AI in the past yeah. and made an AI game we're gonna play called this, AI Art Imposter. That yeah. was an AI artist draw a picture. And so that, that was like, like one of the yeah, games. We're going to play this this week. Yes, just generally has been much more uh, positive about some of the benefits of AI rather than what is the normal sentiment amongst artists and, and you know, I guess general uh, Twitter pop. Oh, he's watching the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And responding. Population, which is that, you know, AI is bad and it takes jobs from well, people. Well, AI and the sentiment from artists, artists' opinions don't matter. It just doesn't matter because what matters is the opinion of the people that are buying the product. What do you which... True. Let's go with this thing. If a corporation is abusing somebody, it does not matter what the abuse victim says as long as the person who has the powerful position can win. So imagine, take, take out the AI from the equation, right? Take out the generative AI. Imagine Disney was on DeviantArt and it found some character designs on some rando's DeviantArt and they took it and they made a film out of it. And they did not credit the DeviantArt user. And instead, they used their money to bury the DeviantArt user. It doesn't matter if the DeviantArt user complains, if they've got the money. Maybe this is something that Shad will, will think about. So imagine you've got a society where, most of, where a good portion of people in the positions of power say, white people are a problem. 
white people are the reason that we all are having a bad time. White people are just uh, destroyers of culture, destroyers of society, and it would be better if they just didn't exist. So uh, you get oppressed. Now, now you're saying, don't oppress me, I didn't do anything wrong, don't oppress me. But the people on top of you say, uh, society doesn't have a problem with this, so why should I listen to you? Now, I'm not trying to equate these things. What I'm trying to say is just because you don't care about the victim that you were making does not make their voice invalid. It's the fact that an abuser will always invalidate and ignore the cries of their victims so that they can justify and feel good about the abuse that they do onto others. So that's not a good excuse. And the fact that he is so giddy about saying, hey, let's, let's ignore our victims. Let's just take what we want and ignore the victims. It's really telling. Thoughts on this? I think it does matter because we've seen examples of, you know, taking AI out of it. When Blizzard had controversies of, you know, certain accusations of things, if their games were still okay, do you think people would still buy their game knowing that the people who worked in it were treated poorly? Most people probably. If it was good, it, like, this is, when something's genuinely good and people want it because it's like, they want a good game, yeah. Because, like, if that's the case, then, then all right, cool. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. As an artist, I'm just like, there, there is, especially with games as well, because I went to a game jam over the weekend, actually, yeah. and I saw developers work on games, and the, there's just a little magic sprinkle that people add to creative forms at once. That I think, of course, there's assistance you can get with you know, the fact that we make video games with computers. That in of itself is an assistance tool. But like the very idea of rendering a 3D image into like, like with the lighting, everything like that, that's a complete like computerized process yes. to finalize an image that the artist isn't doing themselves. Yes. Uh, there's still artistry in it. And that's the same with AI art. You still need that artistry. Exactly. My concern is when AI tools get to the point where they are so accessible and people are okay with a certain level that just you're going to lose that magic touch from people because people want to just play a certain thing or have a certain experience that you're no longer going to have i don't know like art forms like the same way of like if you go to a general store and buy a chair compared to a handcrafted one sure that you know a general store one's going to be all good and work fine mm -hmm. but there's just something about that handcrafted one that, you know when you sit down at night mm -hmm. you're going to be like oh this is a nice chair it's that, it's that element of That's artistry but what the product we're talking now about the about product versus art which is another part of the the conversation i'll have eventually later where there is a difference between art and art like product the ripoverse art like product because it's just there to emulate something but there is nothing behind it there's no artistry behind it pointed out is proof that um modernization of an industry doesn't take away the fact that people sometimes still want the handcrafted yes. higher version and there's still gonna be handmade art that people are gonna want yes they will but be. it just means that there's gonna be more accessible more affordable really high quality art uh, for people to both make and consume mm. which opens up accessibility and that little kind of human touch sprinkle you're talking about that's gonna set standard AI art apart from the best AI art. What he's arguing here is that you should only be allowed to ever find and purchase human created content if you are going to pay top dollar for it and or it goes extinct. Or you're going to say that creators of art whose art whose work, labors, times, style have been used to sell product to you because what you are purchasing is a product line. You are using the manufactured and commercialized skills of other people in order to accomplish the garbage heap that you are making. That you should pay corporations for that skill instead of the artists that it came from and then dehumanize and undervalue the artists who were trained off of that. AI art is the stuff that has human artistic input to make it really, really stand out, to have meaning behind it. And so I do think that's going to be there still. And then you have the handcrafted side that is still available. I... He's still trying to pretend like he's better than other people as he uses generative AI because he goes, look, you've got the generative AI and then you've got the generative AI that has the human touch, which is what he's calling his Photoshop stuff. It's because it doesn't just come out of generative AI. Then he goes and copies his wife's face onto the, whatever he makes. So then he that makes him better than you. He's not just an AI generator. He uses Photoshop to impose his wife's face on everything. So you know what? Congratulations, Mr. Artist. I think we will there will be a time where games now with AI and we're gonna have a there's gonna be too many games, I think. We're getting mm. to the point already now where there's not enough time in the year to play every single new game that comes out, even if you have no life. Like if that's all mm. you do. Mm. I was going to say, because this got lost a second ago, and he was talking about if there were abuses about, like, within a company, are you sure that there would not be this thing? Now, number one, I want to talk about The Last of Us 2. Was there not huge controversy from because of the director and the way that the director of that game was treating fans uh, who responded to what he made? Were there not the same issues? Was it a different or the same director for Borderlands 3, who there was so much controversy around that? The game is garbage. There's so much controversy around that because of the way that the the director or whoever was in charge of that was mistreating people has there not been this whole huge dealio made about 
sexual abuse in Hollywood about the Me Too with the Me Too movement, whether you agree with it or not, is there not agreement in general that there have been terrible people like Roman Polanski, Jeffrey Epstein? If all of this stuff really doesn't matter, then why draw a line? Why do any of this stuff? Why talk about any of this abuse? Because it's clearly, oh, I'll go and see the next 007 movie. It doesn't matter if there is any malfeasance behind any of it. I don't care. Why did people even talk about how there were there was, um, why did anybody even talk about how the Mulan movie, the newer one, was done near or in the place of a Uyghur Muslim camp in China? Like, why bother? If the whole thing is, well, bad things happen and nobody cares just so long as I get a good product, then why does anybody care about Kevin Spacey? Why does anybody care about any sort of malfeasance? Because even if you get somebody who is abusive, who is evil, who is doing evil, you just want a good product. So why care? Why do you, why is there this whole anti-woke, woke movement? If it doesn't matter if people are abusive, so long as you get a good product. Is the only response then, is the only reason that the response exists because your politics are not being favored and has nothing to do with the abuse of people in any of these industries? Tell me that. Because that's pretty sickening that you just, I don't care. I'm not saying that we're going to be able to fix everything as individuals because there's only so much as individuals that we can do. But saying that it's totally fine and dismissive and being dismissive of it because you just want a good product. So, you know, whatever happens, happens as long as I could pay 60 bucks for my next video game. Like, that's you condoning any of the conditions. Um, and I also think that's going to cause... I had a point and I forgot about it. Um... <laughs> but let me jump on that then yeah. because I think even if certain markets get oversaturated, the cream is going to rise to the surface, mm. okay? I remember that. My point okay. is going to be that there's going to be so much AI generated games to the point where people are going to be seeking for the more, you know, made by one man that did this by himself. Like, I think we're, and it's going to ebb and flow back and forth because once it's, uh, for example, the most recent game, it's Lethal Company, mm -hmm. made by one one kid basically in a game in, in Unity. And it's uh, like a mining game where you go and have to get resources and get chased by monsters and it's, it's funny or cop. We're going to start seeing more of those now by AAA companies because of the format. Same thing happened mm -hmm. with, you know, Fortnite and the Battle Royales. Like, this is how it happens all the time. And so mm -hmm. each time that someone comes up with a new idea, then everyone else is going to copy mm -hmm. this thing. And I'm just, I'm guessing that most companies who use AI to make their games, aren't going to be the one making new things, but they're going to be copying off what's already successful and making those. So that's not a new thing, as we can see with the trends that have happened, at least in the book community, where you've had, oh, Twilight was super popular, and then it became like Angels, and then it became Dystopian, or it was Dystopian and then Angels. And now everybody is doing Fey Force romances, and a lot of people are getting into dark romances and all trying to copy the dark romances stuff. Like, trends happen. They have always happened. But I want to disagree with the cream of the crop will always rise to the top, because no, it doesn't. This has some sort of belief that somehow you're going to find the goal amongst the trash but all that i'm seeing is a bunch of people that are getting worn out of trying new things of people saying you know what i keep trying indie comics and they keep being garbage i keep trying indie books and they keep being garbage so you know what i'm gonna give up on reading indie books i'm gonna give up on reading new authors because every time i do i get burned and so what's actually going to happen is you're going to burn people out. So the only things that they're going to continue reading are things that already have a reputation behind them that they can trust. They're not going to try new things. And the gaming industry does not work the same as the book industry, nor does it work the same as drawing. Possibly, but I think you'll see some surprising innovation with AI because it's going to enable indie studios to now make some new stuff. The annoying thing with AI, Shad, is that they're making tools for things like art and 3D model. I'm uh, let's, uh, let's talk about this video game industry thing really quick. Study shows 204,000 entertainment jobs will be disrupted by generative AI over the next three years, some of which most impact film are artists like me and my friends. When someone hand waves your concerns, show them this study and be loud. 3D modeling, character, and environment design, voice generation, cloning, and composition, followed by sound design, tool programming, script writing, animation, and rigging, concept art, and visual development, and lighting texture. Meanwhile, in the gaming industry, 3D modeling and concept art visuals developing are the task most valuable to AI, followed by character and environment design, sound design, tool programming, and voice generation and cloning. Overall, the study concludes that entry-level positions in the industry will be disproportionately impacted by the ascent of AI, a detail that particularly worries Hendrix. When you're looking at any technology that's essentially replacing a junior or entry-level role, it is harming the ecosystem. What does that mean if nobody's really entering in and the bar is now this immovable wall? So let's think about this again with Shad. Is he's saying it's totally fine for entry-level and lower-level positions in these creative fields to be removed so that the next generation of creative 
creatives cannot get into these fields because what? You don't have the background. You don't have the resume to get you there. And you need the experience, but now those jobs have been taken from these machines. So what's it going to be? It's going to be it's going to be ivory tower people like him who are the only ones that have access to these places because you're not letting in newer people. You're not letting in people with little experience to grow that experience, to grow those skills. And everything is taken away. And so then you just end up with the haves and the have nots. And Shad is part of the haves. And that's why he's okay with it. Okay with making iron 3D models. What I want you to do is do like UV unwrapping for me. Texturing is something that I would appreciate, or even just having smarter AI or things that make games run better. Like all the actual annoyances of making in this medium aren't being resolved. They're doing other things instead. Well, I think all, the tools, if, if there's a desire, a need that needs to be filled, that there could is. be answered. But they're not doing it. It'll go that they're way. They're not doing it, Chad. That will push Chad's not listening at all. He's saying, look, there are things, the, the guy on the left, the guy on the right here is saying, look, there are things that could actually be helpful, like this repetitive stuff, like texturing, that could actually be helped and leave the design work and what is actually necessary for a creator to do without ripping people off, leave that for the creatives to do. But they're not solving this stuff with the generative AI. Actually, they're just trying to cut out the most important things that are important for people to do, which are also the expensive things. They're not doing the menial labor. They're doing the creative work so that they can launder stuff from creative people and not pay them. That way. Uh, I don't think so. I reckon they'll surpass all of that and just have, here's the model that you made with your prompts or with what mm -hmm. you want with your input. They're not going to actually do the yeah. annoying stuff. It's like, you know, we still have Amazon factories. We have robots now that could do it, but people are still hired to do the job. But then we have AI doing more creative things instead. Like, there's just, I feel like there's a gap in what we actually need to be more creative, and they're not fulfilling that because people are more excited with the other stuff. Maybe. That's an interesting thought. I mean, if the model that you can make with AI is just as good or better, though, I would still say that as a net benefit. Right? And the people who want to make the handcrafted models or power to them. But uh, I think there is, like, there's already AI um, uh, getting better and better at motion catch capping mm. um, uh, just video images yeah. to the point where you, you'll probably be able to do mocap really high quality mocap level stuff without needing a mocap studio mm. motion capture that's insane that's freaking amazing especially for me who's interested in exploring like animation and stuff like that's, See, that's good because that's a tool you can actually end up yeah. using to animate stuff mm -hmm. but then when you start doing taking away the fun part i think is the main thing that like artists and developers ah. have annoyance in you're taking away the fun part photography didn't stop people from painting portraits if people enjoy something they're going to still do it regardless if there's a technology that I mean that is garbage we're not talking about the enjoyment of stuff, bro. We're talking about the creative individual touches. You are stealing people's souls, literally. And you don't have to agree with me personally. This is obviously part of my personal philosophy and what I believe and what I see when I see creative stuff. And people put their hearts, their souls, their imaginations, their expressions, their experiences into the way that they draw, into the things that they draw. I couldn't come up with Silent Hill. I couldn't come up with the things that were in Silent Hill because those are all specific to that creator, their background their culture, who they are. And when you use generative AI, which scrapes this stuff from people and then shoves it into a blender and then pops something out for you, you are not taking the fun out of something. You are stealing somebody's work, stealing somebody's soul, and then monetizing it only for yourself. There is no purpose to this other than for the commercialization of ease for yourself because you are selfish and lazy and talentless and undisciplined. Yes. So people will still do the stuff that they love. Um, but now I want to just jump on what Asmongold says where he says, artist opinions don't matter. Because I think there's a bit of a charity and context that uh, you might, I think we should apply. Because I, I think it's clear from context what he's saying here is that artists crying about people consuming AI products don't matter. Mm. If the product is good and people want it, it doesn't matter how much artists claim it's morally bad and woe is me and jobs lost. It's not gonna, one, it's not going to matter because people don't care. And two, the jobs lost thing, like whenever someone says, if people enjoy sex slavery that is used within the massage parlors, it doesn't matter if anybody says that it's wrong. Who cares? Right, chat? That's how it goes? If people, you know, if the cons consumers of theft don't see anything wrong with it, then who the frick cares if the, the victims have a problem with it? Like, AI is going to replace a job? It's like, no, no, no. The job will be replaced by a person using AI. If an, AI, if an artist is replaced by AI art, they're going to be replaced by a human making AI art. Mm. This is a new industry that is requiring a new skill set, people talented in using certain tools. And so it's actually potentially, like I think, going to create even more opportunities, okay? Um, especially for people who might not have been able to compete. Yeah, like they didn't have mm. not, not only the natural ability to depict the imagination and vision they have in their head because they just don't. No, I'm sorry. You don't have an imagination or a picture in your head when you are using generative AI. You're not creating that. If you go, I see a blonde girl who looks kind of like my wife wearing a spandex suit. 
That's only the beginning. One of the most asinine things that Shad does is he pretends that actually having a thought in your head is some kind of extra skill. And maybe it is for the people that he surrounds himself with. I don't freaking know. But maybe having a thought is a special power to him because maybe it took him a while to learn how to think. I don't know. But having an individual thought, being able to go, huh, I wonder what an apple would look like with vampire teeth. That's not a special skill. Having a thought in your head is a regular human ability that you only lose if you don't use it. Have art and coordination, hand ability, everything. There's also disabled people who were once artists that can't make the art that they once did. The AI art isn't. There are plenty of disabled artists who know how to do art, who learn how to do art. Do not use people as your shield, Shad. Beethoven was deaf and he is one of the greatest composers in history. Do not use other people to justify your lazy self enabling him to make a game hmm. that's phenomenal that's amazing and so i see so much opportunity and potential and the fact that because look, look yes there are going to be jobs lost to ai one you know if it's like anime localizers doing a crappy job and subverting the original translation or you know journalists who make crappy articles about why pikachu is really gay or something like that right Matt right there is saying that all of this is political. He only sees artists, he sees artists specifically as only people who, uh, who say things and believe things that he doesn't agree with. He doesn't see artists as being able to have their own thoughts, their own beliefs, or as anything that may agree with him on other things. He only sees them as they are a political party that I need to take down. I'm happy for those jobs to get done. If I can go better. Also, there's, there is a problem with localizers that I want to talk about, but there's also a problem with machine translators that do not understand the nuances of translation, that do not understand how to make take something from one language that's a saying and then move it into another language. What you actually want are mor moralistic people who want to who value the culture that they are translating into you know their local culture and want to do the best they can to preserve it it has nothing to do while you have this this far range that will be like i want to change everything to make it like my world you also are going to have that they also forget oh my gosh this is part of the same thing too is there are people behind all of these ai generators so they pretend that there are not political ideologies even behind these generators that will choose what is and is not allowed to come by and then they will just blatantly accept whatever it is that comes out of the generator because it's not a person and for some reason they think that the ai generator does not have a bias i just the biggest thing for me i can't get over how he is playing attack dog for corporations because he's like it's totally fine to just take other people's stuff put it in a generator you know you put it on amazon and once i purchased it i can take your book strip it put it in this thing and then just just have chat gbt rewrite your book as my book and then resell it and never pay you never think of it because you know you were dumb enough to put your book out there for other people to read which means i can use it however i want including training and re reselling it that was not the agreement of sharing art but you know what do i know I can't believe that somebody who has made a channel of complaining about other people's creative works and how bad they are between Marvel, between DC, between his garbage takes on Bloodborne, that he's just like, you know what? Yeah, let Marvel take Shadow of the Conqueror and stick it through ChatGPT to rewrite it so it's better, and then they can do the video, they can do the movie of it, calling it, you know, Shadow of the Tyrant, and not give any homage to Shad because it's theirs now. You put it out there. Congratulations for making Disney more money. More genuine job than all that. I say good, right? Uh, then it will create opportunities for other people. And it actually is going to create opp opportunities for small studios. Again. You're not going to win anybody into your political dispositions if you're saying, you know what? I want you to die. This just makes me think of how often it comes up in conversation where they're like, just remember, these people want you naked and dead and poor. What is he saying right now? Oh, you write that Pikachu is gay? Well, I want those jobs taken away from you. Chad, you're not going to win anybody over to whatever it is you believe in when you act with such malice and such dismissal and such disgust that you're not even talking about people anymore. You're like, you know what? You disagree with me? Well, let me, let me doom you into the ground. You're just like the people that whatever it is you decided that you hated at some point. Because they will be able to increase production output. And as I've been saying so often, the people who are in the best position to benefit from AI art are traditional artists. No, it's not. Increase workflow, increase output. Stop talking for artists when you're not an artist, Shad. The most, the people that can benefit the most from generative AI are talentless bunholes like you.
that wants to emulate having any artistic bone in their body, who want to LARP being an artist, that's you. That's the main benefactor of generative AI. Background, or just applying their artistic vision and eye to create far better, more complex artistic pieces with the use of AI, so integrated or not, right? That'll just be better than any other AI item is producing. Have you seen the live uh, AI generation that have, like, like there's examples on Twitter where you have yeah. a, um, someone is digitally painting and there's a live action AI generating yeah, yeah. happening next to it. And so you can speak, an artist who is a digital artist can get a final result in like a hundredth of the time, but because they understand proportion and certain color and posing and everything like that, they, the AI final rendered version will be vastly superior to someone who doesn't understand that. So why would you want somebody else to have control again look i've seen those i've i've shown video clips of those on this channel in my generative ai stuff why would you want to hand over the control of your art to whatever algorithm is in there to change literally what it is you're doing because that is what you're doing absolutely there are crazy uses of artistic uses of ai art with traditional methods mm. that produce insane incredible stuff there's not just going to be one or the other the greatest power um is going with ai the greatest thing you'll be able to achieve with ai art is when artists use it in conjunction and already we're seeing mind-blowing stuff i know i'm repeating myself i i apologize i just i cannot get over him speaking for artists you're the one that's going to benefit the most from cheating yourself out of using your own skill to control your own destiny to create your own original compositions your own original characters your own original designs because this thing will finish the picture for you so it's getting that information from somewhere else you don't have max control they are not benefiting from it artists are not benefiting from something else completing whatever it is they're trying to make it only finish it only benefits people who cannot think who are not disciplined and who are unwilling to learn the skill and so at the end of the day though if people make something that people like with ai uh, what artists complain about ultimately doesn't matter one because a lot of the moral posturing is actually founded on misinformation and two a lot of the moral posturing is founded on misinformation people can make the same complaint people can say the same thing about every single religious belief period oh you believe that sex before marriage is immoral is wrong or is whatever that's just misinformation that's just moral posturing based on misinformation chad that's not a good that's not a good argument. It's dismissive. It's disrespectful. If you want any of your positions to be taken seriously, then you need to not just dismiss people as, oh, you're just dumb and I know better than you. Like, that's it. Understand that people have beliefs that are different than yours, that they truly believe. And if you want to claim that you tried to get to know why people believe what they believe and where they are coming from, then actually show it. Because anytime I listen to you talk about this subject, all you do is show that you do not care, you have never cared, you don't listen to anybody, and then you pretend that you do while saying, hey, everybody is just stupid and I'm not going to listen to anybody. A lot of people don't care that heaps of people getting commissions to make furry porn art or whatever are going to lose a job because now people can get it from AI. It's like, mm. no one gives a crap. Yeah, uh, my observation... Again, he uses another thing that he doesn't like as an excuse to steal from people. people. This is, I think we're going into like an industrial period of creative industry. We're in the college period right now. We have artists who will do all the drawing, all the coloring, or all of the mm. elements that are needed. But now we're going, we're moving to the factories who can now churn out higher quality and more mass produced mm. material. And I'm not saying that's good or bad because there were good and bad things from the industrial revolution. But... I think the net is good though. Like, but now we've got nine to five jobs now, Chad. We can't go out and like the amount of people that we just want to go back to farming and making clothes ourselves, but we've lost those skills. Yeah, but then the fact that they almost died of starvation and uh, so many commodities, luxuries were so expensive. But like, I feel like I'm more depressed now. You know, like back I think in the that's day, not, that's like I think that's a societal thing that might not necessarily associate so closely with te technology. Like I do think social media plays a role in it. Yeah, but um, I also think, like, the nine to five model isn't necessarily uh, like um, a model that is locked in because of you know uh, capitalistic systems. Is it the nine to five? Didn't that? And people correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not super educated on that specific thing. But I thought the nine to five and the the school system. Um, situation where you've got like these bells that were ringing was in order to train people to work for the factory to get used to the factory routine so then they would go into the factory and so that is where the nine to five came from is also that factory training of the industrial situation and uh, yeah like like to me there's no other point in human history in which, where it is easier and more accessible for the average joe to become wealthy than right now yes. it is crazy the amount of uh, uh, financial freedom and mobility that anyone has is crazy mm -hmm. like, like there is so much opportunity uh, back in the day yeah there were farmers and if they didn't want to be a farmer they were basically screwed for most instances they didn't have access to education to opportunities but now if you don't like your job you can change you can change you yeah. can and their information is so for now
until you lock everybody out of that. And that is exactly what Shad is championing. Championing. Champion. <laughs> is being a champion of. Is he is saying, lock people out of the ability to do these things. If you want to become an artist, if you want to become a writer, don't even bother because you will always be enslaved because other people will be taking your stuff and selling it for more. Con men will steal your stuff and sell it for more and you are screwed. Be a corporate rat until the day that you die. That is what Shad is helping. You can educate yourself in complex fields. You can learn to be a qualified mechanic and never learn, just on the internet for free. This is insane that the opportunity is available today. And a lot of this is the result of, yeah, modernization, industrial revolution, and all that stuff. It's crazy. Mm. Like, like the things that, that we buy for a, at a couple of dollars, like linens, right? It's crazy how expensive they were in the past. So you're, you're, well, it's just the fact like, hey, you're right, Shad. Like, <laughs> I just don't know what the future holds because of all of this. Like, it's, <laughs> I feel like I would be one of those guys back in the day that said, no, nah, I don't like the factories. Uh, take me back to the country and uh, you know, give, give me sickness and illness. As long as I have my 10 kids and uh, you know, my home built cabin, I'll be good. I could... But you can still do that if you want. You have the freedom to pursue these oh, things. No. more freedom than before. Well, because now, because of the way that life, okay, now we're getting into society, okay. <laughs> society in general, but we can't do that anymore because I can't go and buy land because of the way that money's earned. I have to go to a job to, you know, mm -hmm. get the things that I need. There's just so many more societal things that have shifted now that there's actually things that aren't available to us anymore. Possibly. I that also shows me such a privileged position for Shad. It's like, well, if you want to go do that, then you can just do that, bro. A lot of people don't have the opportunities you have. A lot of people cannot just pick up and go and buy a bunch of land. A lot of people do not have that excess money. Land is an interesting one. We are getting a little yeah, gonna, because like, I still cause... think there's great opportunity because like anyone can just try and think outside the box and have an idea. Yes, I think the thing I'm trying to pull across mm. is saying that like just because we're saying we're all okay with it doesn't always mean that yeah. that's a good thing. And exactly, and I'm not saying that everything is perfect in society today. I'm just, I just feel it's a uh, hundred times better yes. than many instances in the past. Not in every instance. No. I think the breakdown of the family is causing massive problems in modern society. Um, but that's kind of unrelated. Yeah, we'll just um, go back to the AI stuff. I just mm. think that there's a lot of unknowns. There's lots of things to be excited about, mm -hmm. but there's also going to be. I think these are just growing pains. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going through. So artist opinions don't matter, okay? Uh, so from the perspective that I You know why he says that? Because he's not an artist. He says, artist's opinions don't matter. I'm going to overstep all of the artists, smash on all of the artists, including his brother Jazz. A great look there, Shad. I'm, I'm not jealous, and um, I know what it's like to not have the greatest relationships with your siblings. It's just very sad how much he's dehumanized other people. I think Asmongold is talking from. I completely agree. It's not to say artists can't have useful input as to what you can do with AI. I, I'm like, I think, what have I already said? I think artists can make the best AI art. They're the ones to benefit most. And in that sense, what they could bring to the table is very valuable. But the whole moral outcry is not only pointless, it's founded on misinformation. The moral outcry is pointless because he doesn't care. Because to him, the artists are logs. They're lower than logs because he would just burn them in a fire because he believes that they all just believe opposite to him politically. So he's okay with ruination of them. He is okay with removing their individual identities. He is okay with making them poor as a punishment for standing up against whatever it is he believes in or for ruining his favorite franchises. So the moral cries of, please don't hurt me, don't steal my things, don't mean anything. And achieves nothing because at the end of the day, if you get, if people get a good product that's affordable, as I agree with Asmund Gold here, if it's made with AI or not, people don't care. If it's affordable and good quality and fills that need, it'll they'll, they'll buy it. It's basically sad because I just think of like anime as an example that there's people who are underpaid and overworked just bring you new seasons of shows and people don't care because they just want a new season. They don't really there's no empathy of how it's made. They just mm -hmm. want they want the sausage. But now they probably will be able to make anime without. I mean, people at all. If they use AI to make anime, they'll be like less like strenuous conditions perhaps. All right, so we'll see what else he says. Wait. All he's thinking about here, if they use AI to make anime, there will be less strenuous conditions, perhaps. Yeah. It doesn't, like, your opinion on it, like, just because you do it doesn't, like, nobody cares. <laughs> so just because you do art, no, like, I can see what he's saying here. Uh, just be, like, this is interesting, right? I have found artists legitimately insulted by AI art because people are able to make good quality art equivalent to what they make easier than what they can. That is not true. People are pissed off at generative AI because they're saying, you stole from me. You did not make that. You say, I made this thing. I spent hours making this thing. This is my skill. You did not make it. You're a liar. You're a con man. You're a theft. You're a thief. That's why people are angry. And you are miscategorizing it in order to make yourself a victim, in order to make yourself self-righteous. And you're lying. It is not about you being able to do something. Artists want to see other people be able to draw. Artists generally have... Artists have so many different things, labors of love they put out there, tutorials, suggestions for what type of art of, uh, of supplies to use, recommendations for tutorials, books on how to learn how to do things. Artists want to see you do better. 
a generative AI model is not you learning how to do something. And it is not anger at you having an image. It is the same thing as if I saw, if I posted my image, one of my images, and then I saw it on somebody else's page and they said, hey, look, I made this. That's not anger because you have an image. It's anger because of theft. And to me, uh, that I just came, it came off so negatively in gatekeeping because one, AI art, because people can make great AI art with AI image generators, doesn't devalue the uh, skill needed to make it by hand. That is still, I still value, I still respect, I think it's remarkable talent, okay? But then at the same time, who are you to try and resent the fact that other people now can make an awesome images and depict their, their imagination? Hey, hey Shad, did you dislike the newer Star Wars movies? Who are you to gatekeep Star Wars when it is reaching out for other audiences to mean something to other people that aren't you? Screw you. Oh, you're supposed to gatekeep things that you care about so people don't come in and pee all over it? Mm. So that people don't come in and steal things that you care about and then claim it as their own? Mm. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I, I can come off as pretty scummy that you would take issue with the fact that other people now... Scummy. You're calling the people whom you are stealing from scummy can make awesome art in a different way to you, but arguably to certain levels of quality, right? I do not see I, the, the resent that I've seen from artists that take issue with the fact that other people can now express their creativity and just because they don't have to put in as much effort as them because they do, they produce it with a different tool is actually pretty sad. And, and, it, and, and it shows that they don't truly value what they have to make with their own skill because if they understood that, yeah, it's still a credit that you can make this in this more difficult way, that should give you value. That should be satisfying enough, being content enough. Like, it feels like artists need that validation from other people to find uh, satisfaction in that. For him, it's so much projection. Talking about validation, the guy that goes on a bunch of different shows and goes, hey, hey, hey guys, hey guys, I made everybody pissed off about generative AI, but I think that I'm amazing. You guys think I'm amazing too, right? He needs the validation. Who is the one that did the 15 minute video about his five star reviews while ignoring all of the criticisms and has never taken any criticism for his own failure of a book, his garbage piece of self-righteous rapist apologies and has never looked further into it, but he's... He's saying that authors, creatives that are being stolen from openly and profitizing, pocketing that stuff. He's going to start comic book publishing company where he uses generative AI. Good thing that everything that comes out of generative AI is, uh, is a fair use because I guess once Shad publishes his stuff, we can all publish his stuff too. We'll have to look forward to that. What should we call it? Bad adversity? Bad adversity publishing? Sounds like, sounds like a trip. Because that's what we're, you're actually asking for here, is as you justify generative AI, and that putting it through generative AI suddenly makes it open and fair use, and there's no devaluement to it, then what you're asking for is copies of copies of copies of copies to forever go on. Because if it makes money, then why wouldn't I do my own version of it so that I could then make money off of your labor? There's no moral anything here. If people will buy it from me because I can give them, oh my gosh, that's a whole nother way to go. Okay, so imagine people don't like J.K. Rowling. Obviously, a lot of people don't like J.K. Rowling. But what if you can just take her fiction and then run it through a generative AI thing, and now it's considered your own based on Shad's argument, and now people can purchase morally correct J.K. Rowling stories, Harry Potter stories, by this secondary author who has the correct politics. We're just gonna keep running through everybody's individual, all of these, all of these parasites. And I mean that in the most literal sense, not in the way that Shad is using scum, but in the way that they are latching themselves to people who actually have talent, who actually have skill, who actually have discipline in order to enrich and feed themselves. Because everything that Shad is talking about doing would not exist without the hosts that are being sucked off of in a not pleasurable way. Art. And uh, to me, relying so much on other people's affirmation is not a healthy mentality. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, just. Chad, you want to talk about your book? Speaking of um, relying on other people's affirmations to feel good about yourself, I would love to talk to you about your book. I would love to know the reasons behind the choices that you made. You want to talk about it? Because I would love to have a discussion about your book, about your characters, and if you actually bothered to do a secondary editing on all of these comic books that are now on your back wall. Are you showing those because you actually worked on them or are you showing them because now it's just another product for you to brag about your opulence with? Because artists can do art, right? So, <laughs> like, it, like, yeah, now other people can make art with AI. And when people, like, people resent, and artists resent, that people might claim to be an artist by making art with AI, right? And it's like... Oh my gosh, is he really going to talk about needing validation from other people as he now makes this argument that, well, people kind of resent me for calling myself an artist. And he's going to 
go to his partner here on the set to validate his feelings. Hang on, they're not claiming to be the same type of artist. They're not saying they made this by hand or they're as talented with hand-drawn, you know, art with what they made, right? But some of the best AI, and by the way, I don't think all AI art is artistic. I think there's a really lazy slice of just people spew out there with a lazy prompt. Wait, why does he get to determine who is and is not an artist? I thought you weren't allowed to do that. The thing is that what really annoys me is some people equivocate that to all AI art. All he is literally now gatekeeping what counts as generative AI art when saying artists are not allowed to determine what is and is not art. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, but he is dumb in this. He is at least dumb in this. I don't know what his opinions are in other things, but he is so biased in this. You just put in a prompt and it takes no artistry at all. And that is just a really disingenuous deflection by not being willing to acknowledge the reality. It's like, because the reality contradicts their argument, so they want to straw man it and render and, and just present all AI art is lazy and it's just a prompt when some of the best AI art takes artistry, takes effort, takes time to make, but they don't want to acknowledge that. And that's, one, that's what triggered so many people in Twitter because I was proving them wrong. Mm. I said, no, best AI art takes quality. And I gave them challenges. Like, all right, make this image that I made with AI art with just a prompt. It's impossible because I know the limit. But people literally did. He, they, he gave the prompt. And look, as he makes this argument, and he looks, look at the look on his face, as he's looking at his co-host for validation right now, for agreement specifically. But Shad gave this argument of, hey, here's this thing, make this thing, but better. Notice how he's not showing any of the tweets where people actually responded making the thing that he made. Because people did answer his challenge, and they proved him wrong, and he ignored all of that proof. ...to this technology, and to make it what I made takes a lot of effort, and oftentimes drawing a handmade pose and all that stuff, right? And no one could uh, succeed the challenge because I knew the limitations, and I was like, see, certain types of AI takes a lot of effort, and even artistry, and I'm perfectly okay with people claiming to be an artist with AI if they, uh, if they apply artistic intent. Hey, I'm perfectly okay with people using references and creating art if they actually make the art themselves without using generative AI. How is what he is doing right now any different than what artists are saying when, they're, when they are saying, hey, you're not an artist if you use generative AI? Because right now he is qualifying it as well. So give me a, give me a, tell me how this is different because you are now gatekeeping. You are now determining that other people are not putting in enough effort. So... Right? And that's not me saying that they're the same or equivalent. I do not think a photographer is the same type of artist as a comic artist, someone who draws, or a cartoonist, or something like that. And I don't think they're the same type of artist as a painter or a, a sculptor. I think these are different artistic mediums that have merit within their own sphere. And AI art, there is there is more, there's AI art that has more artistic merit than others, depending on the artistry you apply to it. Um, and so again, the people that dismiss, you know, oh, it's just doing it in a lazy prompt, and you just do it a couple of hundred times until you finally get an image you like, is uh, a really disingenuous oversimplification of what it is and just dismiss the merit because there's merit there no there's not but explain the merit beyond uh i put it in photoshop and plaster my wife's face on it and actually mess up the proportions of the body and then call myself an an anatomical genius like it's it, it's not it's not relevant it's like whenever one of these like you know really well respected and, and really respectable uh directors talks about how bad marvel is shut up old man shut up i like watching the thor movie it was cool so, that, like, again, an interesting thing. Do you have any thoughts on that last comment? Because, yeah, I was talking about, I think Amman Scorsese saying that, you know, that yeah, Marvel films are not yeah. real cinema. And it's like, no one cares that you are snobbing your nose at, at, at the, we like it. It's mm. fun, all right? Just because, uh, and it's the same with the AI art. Like, there's a lot of people. It's so funny that he would make that argument of, I don't care if you would snub your nose at it. Okay, so then how come there are so many of these channels that are literally all about just snubbing what Marvel does or snubbing what DC does? And they say, well, we don't like what you're doing. You're screwing over the fans. Okay uh who cares what if it's not for you like didn't didn't that whole thing just become a big issue and yes i'm using the words not for you on purpose because didn't that just become a whole thing and so then they got mad because something that was technically their thing got taken away this really just feels like revenge from mean heartless people who were possibly nerds at some point and feel like they were made fun of for it so now they're gonna go like well we're gonna go and victimize people who did nothing to us because of tangential relationship we see with people to the abusers what artists right try and claim that all art looks like trash and then if it looks like trash, why are you threatened by it and then if it's trash why do people like it and want to consume it and there's ai artists that are getting commissions to make ai art images specifically because they're good at it and they can make specific no nah, it's because it's cheaper and the other person just doesn't want to bother with the time and they're also dumb there are also people that are pretending so many people that are pretending that they are doing real art and then selling this generative ai stuff as commissioned art there are so many fakers things because not everyone can get specific results it takes knowledge and talent with the technology to make it and uh, people like it because it's really good quality and it doesn't take as long and they can get it quicker and and that's just awesome for people who want to consume you know and have that's just awesome for people that want to consume the question here is do you want to be a consumer shad is clearly a consumer he believes in just mass consumption in multiple ways apparently 
and you just eat and eat and eat and eat and consume next thing and eat. And when you talk like that, it makes me wonder, do you have a thought in your head or is it just consume? Is it just produce and consume, produce and consume, because that's all you see in what exists? Some art, have whatever they want. And so that made people lose their mind. And I think it stung particularly with artists because they want to feel like their opinion matters on it. When the larger consensus of this is that people are already accepting it. It's becoming more and more widespread. It's already integrated into Photoshop. People are using it more and more. Businesses are using it more and more. And uh... I think that particularly stung artists because they want to think that their opinion matters. That's what he said. It's very similar to what horrible opinions or whatever that person said. The actuality is we care because you are specifically targeting and hurting us. An abuse victim under your foot saying, stop, please stop, is not speaking because they want specifically their opinion to matter to you. It's because you are victimizing them. And you can't see that or you refuse to see that because you have to cushion your ego and pretend that you are a better person than you are as you victimize people. And there's nothing else to say here. Like, this is why I started out the video saying, if you believe this, then there is no conversation to be had because clearly you are not listening. You do not care. And every chance you get where it is, acknowledge that you are hurting a person. See how you are affecting the person. You... It, you to do deduct the person from the situation to just say it's just their ego it's just their ego they just want to think that they care oh when i walk into somebody's house and start robbing their house the homeowner is like they want their opinion to matter no it's just might makes right that's all that it is the homeowner's opinion only matters if they can pull a gun and overpower the thief but until then their opinion doesn't matter that's what this is it's really sad. It's, it's basically the result. Like, we're at a point where artists need to kind of get on board or get left behind. Mm. The technology is moving so fast. Uh, and crying about on Twitter doesn't... The artists need to get on board or get left behind. You need to just cooperate and it'll be over faster. Achieve anything. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Uh, and until then, stay on watch. It's so sad. I don't really know what to say other than it is so sad. Just listening to people talk about people in this way. To listening to people say, you know what? I don't freaking care. And all it is is about hurting you. That's all there is. There's one more thing that I wanted to mention here. <laughs> In this, where you had Jade, the cope. This dude is legit against glazing your images because it's illegal in his eyes. Talking about glaze, Nightshade has been released. Is use of it considered legal or illegal? So Nightshade has been released. For those who do not know, it's a software that attempts to poison an image, so if trained on, will mess up the models. For example, say that you have a picture of a cat and you run it through nice shade, then if you attempt to train the model on that image, it'll replace the image to say dog prompt, the category, or pencil, which means that these prompts will be spoiled with a cat pick, making it so that the generated image won't get you what you prompted. There is an issue that the creator of Nightshade has not talked about either from lack of legal knowledge or ignorance or they just don't care and then and to them it's someone else's problem. The issue is that it may be illegal for some countries to use Nightshade. Basically if you release publicly a computer file in this case, an image file that knowingly and willingly causes harm or distribution to other people's computer systems or software, it may be considered a criminal offense. Now, it does not matter in the defense of which other what other parties intend to do with the files you release publicly. All the law is considered are actions, and if they have and if they and if they harm other people or computer systems. In some countries, these laws give prison time as well as heavy fines. To all artists, I would suggest getting legal advice before using the software and releasing compromising images that may cause harm to other people. So, um, they want to be able to hurt you. They want to be able to steal from you. But if you try to stop them, you're the bad guy. It's just, it's, it's really sad. And I hate that it continues to go. And I hate that the, the whole thing is just dehumanize, dehumanize, dehumanize. And then they pretend that they're listening. They pretend to give anybody any chance. And they don't, which is why it's useless to talk to them. Final note. I can seem very passionate many times throughout this video. I mean, that's probably an understatement. I can also seem very abrasive and severe. But I don't, I haven't given up hope. I don't think anybody is hopeless. I do think some of his opinions in this are evil. I think some of his ideas are evil. And I think some of his treatment of people is evil. But I don't like to write any person off from being able to see what they're doing, doing wrong and correcting course. So the reason for my abrasion is almost usually, well, because I'm kind of clumsy, but also to try to like break through that hard exterior, which also the way that I go about things can also just make somebody who is stubborn even more stubborn. I get that. But partially out of frustration and also partially out of 
break trying to break that glass of just those the ego the defensive ego that's there so as as hardcore as some of us uh, some of me can feel right now i do hope that shad can see what he's doing and how he's treating people and fix it why am i doing this video i guess it really doesn't matter at the end of the day because the main people in this video, the main people that agree with Shad's video, aren't going to listen and they don't care. They've already said as much. They don't think about morality. They just think about consuming and product, and that's all they want to do. And um, Shad just wants to keep making money without putting effort into anything. But I guess the big thing here is to remind people that Shad is not an artist, that when you do this, you are not an artist. You are victimizing people. Uh, it is a lame and disingenuous argument to label everybody that you don't like as being politically the other side just so you can justify to yourself harming them in any way that you want and that's where we are you are a human user and you don't care about the quality of life the experience of experiences of others and as you lecture people about needing the validation of others you are getting your cue cards on what you're allowed to do based on what corporations are doing you're looking for the approval of your peers on the abuse of others and that's why you also use the same political terminology to label your victims if you're somebody that's like shad i'm sorry but listening to this shad is the way that shad treats artists and the people that he is happy stealing from you're abusive, you're uncreative, you're uncompassionate, you're immoral, and you will use anything that you can to justify your abuses of others. There's not much more to say, because frankly, you don't care what I say anyway. Hold on to hope, artists. There are a lot of people fighting against this that actually have money. There are a lot of people that do care. And the majority of people who are not grimy con men trying to fill their pockets as quickly as possible for as long as they can are not buying into this. But they want you to give up and submit so that they can continue to make money off of your labor and so that you do not fight back but do fight back do be yourself make your stuff don't listen to these people with that said let me know your thoughts are down in the comments below have a great weekend uh, good luck and don't die was that wayland cross in the trunk do you know or is that something that's still being figured out the person in the trunk was not wayland cross is he in trouble? We don't know who did it, but as the owner of the car, the longer he's missing, the worse it looks for him. Cross isn't a killer. For the last couple of years, the average number of murders in Baltimore has been over 300, and it's been going up. Mind you, that's only whatever the badges count as official murder, and believe me, there are people that don't count when they die. Wayland? If you're down here, tell me. I'm not talking to the badges, I just... I've been looking for you. They found a body in your trunk. Way. Why? Did you do that? To the left, plain black letters read along the wall. You walked in the corridor. Once that ends, you chose the dark is on the right. My vision goes blurry flickers black and black and black for longer intervals until I can't see anything at all. I'm not screaming anymore, but my voice echoes back to me. Where the hell am I? You're dead, Josephine. Even smart people do stupid shit sometimes, right?